Um, another thing to to think about is who's working on, on the documentary. Um, so this is where it gets kind of interesting where I'll kind of use the the PMD element um, of my background experience. But thinking about getting all of the agreements in place, you know, the work for hire agreements from, you know, the videographer, camera person, you know, generally with, with documentaries, you're dealing with a very small, you know, crew. It's not like a actual feature film production where you have many moving parts in different departments. But, you know, you may have a writer, um, depending upon the type of documentary and the, and the style. You know, will you have an editor? You know, if so, sometimes the writer is the editor, you know, as well. You know, you try to keep, you know, the filmmaker tries to keep uh, low cost, you know, for documentary filmmaking. So sometimes they, they too are not only the, the producer, but they're also the writer as well. Um, but for any voiceovers, narration, um, but definitely with, you know, the videographers, you want to make sure that you get all of the, uh, the agreements in place for the work for hire. Because again, once it gets down to you know, the distribution aspects and how it's being marketed out, whether it's a, a festival run or if it's through um, you know, internet streaming, you know, going through the, the distribution process and negotiation of those agreements, they generally ask for that type of information to make sure that you know, they are in the clear from any potential claims. Um, and also you know, incorporating the indemnification language that I talked about in make sure that the filmmaker guarantees that all of the releases and all of the license agreements and work for hire agreements have all been in place and secured uh, by the time the filmmaker is looking to distribute the project. So in case you know some people don't know what a work made for hire is, I'm sure a lot of people who are probably watching this either do entertainment or are very interested in where you know the basics, but to be on the safe side, I'll just break it down. Mm. Excuse me. So in the Copyright Act, in uh, Section 101, uh, a work made for hire is a work prepared by an employee within the scope of his or her employment, or a work specially ordered or commissioned for use as a contribution to a collective work, um, or as part of a motion picture or other audiovisual work. If the parties expressly agree in a written instrument signed by them, the work shall be considered a work for, made for hire. So that's usually the case. I mean, you're not looking, a filmmaker's not usually looking to hire folks as an employee because then you have to worry about, you know, the taxes and, um, you know, pension and benefits that need to be incorporated in, in terms of um, paying out for the employee. But uh, the written instrument in designating that this is a work made for hire and that, um, that they are not an employee, you know, incorporating that language into the agreements is key to distinguishing whether or not this is an employment agreement or a work made for hire agreement, special commission to do the, you know, the filming or the editing for this particular special commission project. Um, and also how it gets termed outside of the you know, employment context is not just the labeling of it, but the fact that, you know, they, they have some creative license in how they go through the editing process or how they write or how they're filming it, right? And that's not something that is being uh, strictly, strictly supervised necessarily by, by the filmmaker. Um, now, from the, the PMD <laughs> angle, uh, when you're counseling the client, I mean, one thing from a business perspective to kind of think about in helping to cut their costs, right, is thinking about how to package these folks together. Sometimes, you know, a videographer may have the editing capabilities. So not only, you know, when they're negotiating those uh, work made for hire agreements, to do the project, you know, consider what is the cost, what are they charging for their services, and what kind of services are they providing. You want to make that clear in the agreement as well. Um, so sometimes it's best to, you know, definitely have someone who has multiple skill sets to be able to complete the project uh, for you, for the filmmaker, at a, a lower cost rather than engaging separate individuals. You know, considering okay, does this videographer have their own equipment? They should. Um, and if not, are they bring, does the videographer come with, you know, a grip person? These are things that, you know, are, are key to uh, figuring out the, the budget allocations for each of those that are coming on to the project and being able to maximize, hopefully, the profitability for the documentary filmmaker uh, or just the filmmaker in general. I mean, we talk about documentaries, but just filmmakers <laughs> in general. Uh, so again, going into those types of agreements, um, some of the key clauses, oops, sorry, 
the uh, the key clauses are the services to be rendered, which is why I bring I bring this up. Um, also, whether or not they're being engaged exclusively or non-exclusively, the availability of them is is very important. You know, and this all ties back together to let's say even the location agreements, right, uh, or or the permit that you're getting from the film commissioner's office or the filmmaker is. You know, you have to consider will you know the time frame of this videographer's availability you know pose a problem for let's say what's been negotiated for the uh, location agreement so that's something to, to kind of think through in planning from you know I'm gonna call it the pre-production phase but planning you know who's coming on board for the project how you're going to do the production aspects and generally you know trying to do it within a few days or a couple of weeks to to wrap it up uh, in time for, for editing. That's all key. Um, so again, that brings it to the next point of the time for completion uh, of the work. You know, are they being engaged for just the production aspect, let's say for the videographer, or if this videographer has editing skill sets, are they also being engaged to do the editing? What's the turnaround time on that? You know, that's something that's very critical. Uh, making sure from the filmmaker's perspective that they also have the ability to you know, have a final approval right of the project, um, and and you know, making sure if any re-editing is necessary, does that come at additional cost, or is that incorporated within the initial fee that that's given out? So, from a business perspective, that's important too. Uh, so that's that's why I call it the uh, the package deal component. Uh, other key clauses in those types of agreements is credit. You know, if Money is not <laughs> it is not something that is consideration for you know these uh, you know for the videographer or for uh, any of you know the folks kind of coming in that's really doing the production of of the work. If it's not money, it's definitely going to be credit that needs to be negotiated, or it could be a combination of the two, right? So the credit uh, to be accorded on screen or in ads. Now this is where. It gets tricky because depending upon the distribution strategy for this particular project will also dictate as to whether or not even the filmmaker can make that final determination. If it's you know a film project that gets picked up for a cable network, they may not be able to, um, they literally will have no say in terms of how the credits will, will roll, right? So the credits may be streamed pretty quickly, may get cut out for purposes of um, cutting the time frame that this project is actually aired on television. So, you know, the credit is something that a filmmaker can give, but in, in terms of making certain guarantees, that's a little more difficult and that needs to be negotiated carefully. Um, now, the copyright ownership of the work that they're actually incorporating, you know, that's, that's the beauty and, uh, you know, the legal landmine aspects of filmmaking is that there are a lot of different creative individuals coming together and adding their creative elements into the project. So when you're dealing with a work made for hire agreement, you also want to make sure if you're representing the filmmaker that they're getting the assignment of the rights um, over the, the copyrighted material and incorporate within the final project. Now in terms of profits um, and participation points, I mean, here we're not really talking about you know talent necessarily, but if it's you know life story rights and it's someone who's very well known, uh, that's something that can be negotiated um, and will likely be negotiated by someone who is well known who's having their story told and you know getting some participation points in uh, the, the, the split profits. 